Hi, it's Matt Kemp from Matt Kemp Photography. Last week I put up some slow-mo videos that were taken on the RF 200 to 800 lens. And this week, just after a few questions about still photography, I've developed this slideshow for you. Most of these shots, um, or all of them, are all taken as they were, off straight off the card, off the Canon R3. Canon R3 performs well in low light, it's got low megapixel count compared to something like a noisier R5. Let's be real with it, it's f9 at 800 millimeters, but I just want to show you how usable this lens can be. So moving through, we've got a sulfur crested cockatoo. This was shot at 1250 ISO, handheld at 1 800th of a second, f9, full extension at 800 millimeters. Beautiful detail, the autofocus is held strong there. It's done a really nice job. This shot here, I had to exposure compensate by two stops. It looks like a bright sky, but it's not. It was actually quite a dark, stormy afternoon, and this guy was sitting in heavy shadow. So in order to do that, I had to bump the ISO up to 8,000, which is quite high. You can see the sharpness and the, the detail in, in the bird is really nice. Um, the only thing that's a little bit messy in there is the uh, ISO, the grain. With a little bit of Lightroom, we've cleaned it up a little bit, so before and after. This guy here is a plover or a masked lapwing. If I move into the face, you can see on the mask there, there's some beautiful wrinkle detail, eyes sharp, great beak, beak detail, feathers. I've used uh, Lightroom's new lens blur tool, and I think it lends itself really well to this lens. So something that produces a not the nicest aesthetic with a background. When you use the lens blur tool, um, just by pushing apply, it masked it straight away. I didn't have to do any cleaning up on there. The AI is that good. Moving along, this uh, boat was shot probably at about four kilometers from the headland. We see some smog in the background. There was some sea mist, but the numbers that you can make out on the yacht, yeah, they're razor sharp. So there's no question about the sharpness of this lens. I think it's highly usable. It doesn't have a red ring around it. It's not an L-series lens, but it's built like one. Um, I believe the sharpness is for a zoom lens and you know, for the range that you're given and for definitely for the value that it performs at edges on L-series. Uh, this is a water dragon and it was on a boardwalk as I was just going for a stroll through a wetland trying to find some birds in, the, in amongst some uh, shaded areas. You can see there, the eye detail, super sharp. And on this next shot, you can see the membrane. It's locked on still onto that eyeball. Now, it was a bit of a showdown. I can imagine that these were two males. They're juveniles, and they're just testing their life skills for see who can uh, take over some territory one day. I like the action. Um, my settings that I had weren't so good. I had this set for birds in flight off of some advice that I received off a YouTube video and I don't blame the lens's performance, I don't blame the camera's performance, this is a user error. There's so many variables with autofocus as you know with Canon cameras. Nonetheless it locked back onto the eyeballs fairly quickly, yes I missed that shot but it, uh, it quickly recovered. You can see the serrations in the mouth, the eye detail and given that we're shooting in uh, nice light or bright light. Uh, this lens performed very well. This dragonfly, I wouldn't say it's a macro lens, but uh, when we think macro, we often think close up. It doesn't have a close focusing distance, but from the boardwalk, I was able to pull this dragonfly as close to me as possible and still achieve some detail. So the wing detail is really nice. You can see it, the detail on the legs. And this background, unfortunately, at 6400 ISO, we're going to get a bit of grain. So again, a bit of noise reduction in Lightroom and just to, employing that uh, lens blur feature that's been rolled out into the later versions of Lightroom. It's given us a, a slightly better looking image. We've got our water dragon again, climbing up a tree. So what I've done here, just in case you're not too familiar with Lightroom, part of the masking features, you can now select the background and all I've done is brought the levels back, so I brought the exposure back and a little bit of highlight recovery and then again employed that lens blur feature. So I've gone from this to this. So in, in a couple of steps you can get some really nice photos. 
This is a bell miner. They make a beautiful sound, quite iconic along the coastline where I live. And again, just showing you with a little bit of Lightroom magic, we can balance the levels. But otherwise, from a, from a starting point, this lens performs really, really well. I'm quite impressed with it. I think it's a lightweight lens that's good enough for travel. It's got a, a generous uh, focal length. So the problem that you get with an 800mm prime lens is you're stuck with that great big long focal length. It's terrific when you want to go for distance, but if something comes a little bit closer to you, at least with this lens, you can pull it back and not miss the shot. Uh, same bird again, and just pulling in that detail. You can see the bokeh is not too bad. Here we are up close. Looks like he's propping himself up with a stick there. Background is absolutely awful. You can see the repeat patterns here, and it, it, it doesn't render super well. But uh, at f9, that's what we live with. You can see the lighting condition is really bad too. I've metered for the shadows and we've got the highlights blowing out in the background owing to the direct sunlight. A little bit of Lightroom magic. So I've brought in the lens blur feature, also masked the background and just brought the levels back. Very simple steps if you know what you're doing in Lightroom. Uh, just to prove that everything in Australia looks like it'll kill you if it doesn't already. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what this is, some type of fly or a wasp, but um, certainly a lot of detail on there and a uh, small subject and quite happy with how the lens has captured this. Good old butterfly, uh, again just recovering some highlights. Um, uh, instead of spot metering I was using the matrix metering and it was evaluating the whole scene which is predominantly dark so it's averaged it out, brightened up uh, the areas uh, where, where the highlights are, it's, it's brought them up perhaps a lot brighter than intended and so I've just brought that back in Lightroom. Uh, as I walked around the lake I found this guy, now he's got a fish stuck in his neck, he's recently been out fishing, it's beautiful this bird can fly and it can swim, it's called an Australian darter, it gets its name from uh, the way that it hunts its prey, it's got that great big sharp beak there and darts its prey and swallows them whole. So here it is on a sinking boat and some nice reflections and I waited about 45 minutes for it to do anything other than sit there and digest that fish. You can see it has some beautiful little bit of detail from where it was preening and just um, drying out its feathers, what these guys do, and a razor sharp eye. Um, what these guys do is they'll sit there, they'll dry themselves out and then they'll present their wings and, and dry them out before flying off or popping back into the water to take another feed. Here it is, uh, drying its wings out, lots of detail here. So this is where you can see where this lens really shines. Um, again, locking on the eyeball, nice reflection, smooth render. Absolutely love this shot. This is just straight off the card. I've done nothing to this in Lightroom whatsoever. And it just shows that this camera can, on, on particularly a subject like this, with the, with the AI built into the mirrorless camera, it locks onto that eyeball, it knows how to recognise it. Some superb detail, the bokeh is exquisite, and yeah, that's an absolute keeper. So just one more time, looking at this detail, beautiful wing detail, the eyes, everything, it's just magic. And it's gearing up to fly away. And that it did. I wasn't quite prepared with the composition. Um, I probably could have pulled this back a little bit with the focal length, but as it took off, it still maintained the focus on the eyeball right the way through, proving as it goes. So I'm zoomed out there, but you can see that it's just locked on and right to the last image. And I'll leave you there with that shot. Um, if you've got any doubts about this lens, I say when they come out, try and borrow one, rent one. I'd say get your hands on it for the price. It's, um, I, lo I love it. I'm certainly going to be taking it to Antarctica in February um, with my group and um, I look forward to seeing what I come back with. I said that in the last video and I'm still excited about it. So hope you are too. Thanks again for watching.